Jacob, yellow fever is spreading in South America. Have you touched down yet? I arrived in Bogota yesterday. I was able to slow the rate of infection and really contain the outbreaks. Where do you think the next outbreak might be? That's great. Start moving. Warning, warning. Massive outbreak of scarlet fever has erupted in Tokyo. It is spreading to nearby populations. Raising threat level three. I need you to get to Asia quick. Don't worry about the lab has already started making a cure and we'll be done with it soon. So you want me to leave South America? Yes, priorities have changed and there is a higher infection rate in Asia. A plane should be following soon with the cure and vaccine. If you can, eradicate it. You got it, man. I'll be on the next flight out. Well, at least I was able to contain it for a little bit. This week's review, Pandemic. In Pandemic, when you set up the board, you will start off by drawing cards from the infection deck. These cards, as you flip them, will have city names. In these city names, the first three you draw will get three of that infection on it. Then you will draw three more and place two. And then finally, draw another three and just place one. Once that's complete, have everyone draw cards from the player deck. These cards represent your research, which you will use to help you find the cure. That's what these locations are for, so later when you find a cure, you can place these in their spot to know you have found that one. Make sure you have the infection token at the far left of the infection rate, which is at two. Your outbreak counter should read zero. If your outbreaks reach to eight total outbreaks, it is game over. Start all of the characters in Atlanta. The reason for this is because that's the location of the CDC. The wooden figure represents a research location. You can build these anywhere amongst the world. To do that, you must be in that city and have that city's card. For travel, you can drive to a nearby city. You can take a direct flight by discarding a card such as the Hong Kong card and travel straight to that city. You can also charter flights and this can be done if I were already in Hong Kong. I could discard Hong Kong city and travel to any city in the world. The last type of movement comes down between research stations. This is called a shuttle flight. So for one action, without discarding any of your resources, you can travel between the two research stations. On your turn, you may build a research station or you can treat a disease. So once you are in a city, you can, for one action, remove one cube, unless your character ability says otherwise. You can also share knowledge. However, to share knowledge, you must be on the same city as another player, and you can only trade that city's information. You can also take information from another player, so you don't have to wait till their turn to get that city card from them. Once you have five cards of the same, you can go to a city with a research station, turn in those five cards, and find that cure. Once the cure is found, and you place this here, that does not get rid of 
the disease that's already there. However, once you remove every bit of infection of that kind and you have the vaccine found, anytime one of that color is pulled, it cannot infect, which makes the game easier, but it's also a matter of do you take the time to completely eradicate it or not. It all depends on your situation and your strategy. At the end of your turn, you will draw two cards from the player deck. These will come to your character hand. If an outbreak is drawn, you must discard down to a maximum of seven. When an epidemic is pulled, that will require you to lift the infection deck, pull the bottom one, and you will put three in its location. Then you will take the discarded infection pile and you will shuffle these. Once they are shuffled, place it back on top, increase your infection rate, and pull the now new number, which in this scenario is still two, and you flip those. If a city has three and it's pulled again and needs a fourth, this is when your outbreaks happen you will increase the outbreak meter. That disease now spreads to the surrounding cities. So I will now add one of that to each surrounding city. Yes, that even includes these red cities. They now have the black disease there. So special characters such as the medic who can clear an entire city of their disease still ha would have to use multiple actions if a city had two different types because they can only fix one type at a time. With the epidemics, if your infection rate ever increases to the final section and drawn again, it is game over. Now, the part everyone really cares about is how to win. You win when you find the cure for all four diseases. This does not mean that you have to eradicate them all off the board. You just must find all four. Along the way, you can find special event cards in the player deck. These can be used at any time. So pay attention to what these cards do and use them wisely. All right, guys, we're back for our reviews of Pandemic. Craig, let's talk a little bit about the artwork. The artwork's pretty good. Um, it's not the best, but it's, yes, this game more focuses on the gameplay than it does its artwork. Um, you know, I, I think I give them a six. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that as well. Uh, you know, the artwork is there. Uh, you can tell the, the player cards, they have so a lot of uh, details in them. Uh, all the different color pawns, all that fun stuff, but uh, it's not that great. Six, still a solid score, but it doesn't need to be. Right, because that's not the main focus of this right, game. Right, yeah. I would say that's more of it in its thematics. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, let's move on. Let's go into the uh, player pieces or the components. That, I think they do a pretty good job. Um, granted, the infection, um, the diseases, are just little cubes. Um, which, you know, some people might take off for, but it also makes it easy. You're not having to worry about them sliding, moving, anything like that. Nice, easy little pieces that also are compact and fit great in a box or anything like that. So I'm going to give them, I think I'm going to give them a seven on that. Yeah, I'm going to still stick with the six on, on the components. They're just your, the player pawns or your average meeples. Uh, just a little wooden mm -hmm. player pawns. Uh, even the research stations, they're just little blocks of wood. The cubes are just little plastic cubes. They're pretty cool. I mean, it's a good yeah. touch, you know what I mean? It adds some detail, but... And it, they are at least sturdy. 
Yes, yeah, absolutely. But where this game really excels is in the thematics of it. So I'll let you go for that one. So the thematics, I agree with you. I'm going to give them an 8 on thematics. Mm -hmm. um, you do kind of start thinking of as you're playing through and the board starts getting overwhelmed, at least for me, I start thinking about there are people who actually deal with this. Yeah, the CDC yeah. has a job it does on a daily basis that most people don't even think about. Mm -hmm. And you're playing a board game version of their perspective, and it, it starts getting stressful in certain t situations. You're like, is this going to be the card that screws us up? And I, I really like it. I like the fact that I've learned new geographical locations because of this game. And some of them we can't even pronunciate correctly. Exactly. We're still figuring that one out. Um, <laughs> you know, but it helps us widen our scope on yeah, things too. It does. Um, so, yeah, again, it's that eight that I gave them. Yeah, I agree. I, I give it an eight as well in thematics. Um, you know, shout out to everybody who works uh, with customs, board patrol, all that fun stuff. Like, they work their, work their hearts out and, and uh, protect it from a lot of living things that we didn't even know were out there. So, yeah. Um, but this game is a cooperative based game. You know, again, up my alley, cooperative based games and hidden role games. Those are my favorites. Nice. So, uh, this was right up my alley. Uh, give it a solid eight on thematics, you know. The board just starts to get overwhelming with the diseases spreading, and then, ah, oh, crap, we have another epidemic, and everything just bursts into flames. And you think you have it, maybe it's the start <laughs> of the game, and you think you have everything under control. Oh, yeah. And then you get back-to-back -back epidemic cards, and it's like, well, crap, now what do we do? So right. it, it, it's a lot of fun. It, it, it's, it's a great game. Matt Leacock did a fantastic, or fantastic job on designing this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of my favorites. And... You know, with that, the um, the co-op of this, it it's great because you start working together of, oh, I got this plan, yeah, and then things don't happen, the cards don't fall that way, and you have to start switching around. I enjoy that, that panic of it, and one of my favorite cards, once you find the cure, the medic, all he has to do is walk to a city, so you can clear four cities just by moving to them if you yeah. have found that cure, and... That, to me, just makes it great. I love playing that yeah. character. Um, so, overall, you suggest this one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Go buy it. And if you got somebody, if you have a friend that has it, play it now. It's a lot of fun. There's there's some different uh, additions out there on it where the the, the artwork's a little different. And uh, mm -hmm. even the older, this, this game's been out for a while. But even if they have one of the first editions, go out, find it, play it. You know, th this one's fun. Uh, and... You know, I was talking with him not too long ago. Uh, when we played this back in college, I wasn't a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just, whenever somebody said, hey, let's play Pandemic, I knew everybody else enjoyed it. But I didn't at the time. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a couple of years to catch up to nowadays. We played it again, what, about a month ago? Yeah. And I was like, I love this. I want to keep playing this one. Um so I don't know why I had a miss to begin with, but I absolutely advise playing it. Um, and if you don't like it at first, maybe come back to it a little later because it's a great game. Uh, I mean, overall, I'd have to give it an 8. Yeah, i give it an 8 as well, overall. So so guys, be look on the lookout in the future. We're going to have an actual playthrough of this game where you can sit down and watch us play this one. It's more than likely going to be with our wives. But, uh, yeah. So be on the lookout for that. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe below, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Have a good one, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to jump in here at the end um, to give a shout-out to Matt McDuffa. Um, he did a great job with our banner, um, and I'll put an extra picture of it here. You probably saw it in this video. Um, but, yeah, I think he did a wonderful job, so just... Thank you so much for making that for us and uh, letting us use that in all of our videos and on our banner. Um, so thanks again. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to talk with us in the comments.